according to footage released by North Korea's state media on Friday. Russian and Chinese officials stood shoulder to shoulder with Kim Jong-un as they inspected the latest nuclear-capable missiles and attack drones at a military parade in Pyongyang. The Korean War's armistice, which concluded on July 27, 1953, was remembered with a much-anticipated parade in the capital on Thursday evening. This day is known in North Korea as Victory Day. Since the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, the senior defense official from Moscow, Sergei Shoigu, has not visited. The mission from China was the nation's first of its kind since the COVID-19 outbreak started. In contrast to previous years, when Beijing and Moscow sought to distance themselves from their neighbors' nuclear weapons and ballistic missile development, their attendance at events with the North's nuclear missiles banned by the United Nations Security Council with Chinese and Russian support was notable. Photos released by North Korean state media showed Kim, Shoigu, and Chinese Communist Party Politburo member Li Hong's Hong conversing, laughing, and saluting while North Korean soldiers marched and weapons rolled below. This was followed by Kim giving Shoigu a tour of a lavish government facility that was adorned with portraits of Vladimir Putin. According to KCNA, the parade featured North Korea's most recent intercontinental ballistic missiles, the Hwasong-17 and Hwasong-10, which are said to have the range to reach targets anywhere in the United States. According to KCNA, the ceremony included a fly passed by brand new assault and espionage drones. In a luncheon and event he arranged for Shoigu, Kim pledged his support for the Russian people and its armed forces. According to KCNA, Shoigu lauded North Korea's military as being the best in the world, and the two men spoke about cooperation in the areas of strategic security and defense. Shoigu delivered a speech from Russian President Putin thanking North Korea for its assistance during the special military operation in Ukraine at another meeting, according to official media. Strangely, a big image of Putin was spotted hanging in a hallway that Kim and Shoigu were using. The Russian president's visage could be seen looming over the two from a wall across from another photo of the North Korean leader. North Korea has vehemently refuted Washington's accusations that it supplied weapons to Russia for use in its war effort in Ukraine. Vedant Patel, the deputy spokeswoman for the State Department, stated on Thursday that Pyongyang and Moscow relations were a source of extreme worry for the United States. Additionally, Moscow has refused any military sales to its neighbor. Ankit Panda of the American-based Carnegie Endowment for International Peace stated that the new surveillance drones may be used to inspect targets in real time, carry out damage assessments in a fight, and overall improve strategic situational awareness. Five North Korean drones entered the South in December, causing Seoul's military to scramble fighter aircraft and helicopters and step up anti-drone precautions at strategic locations including the presidential office. Given their susceptibility to anti-aircraft defenses, the new attack drones would be of little utility in a battle on the Korean peninsula, 
but North Korea may seek to offer these drones to external customers, Panda added. According to images from the official media, the drones were among the armaments on exhibit at a NAMS fair that Kim and Shoigu visited this week in Pyongyang. Putin's military minister is rumored to have signed covert contracts for fresh weaponry shipments to use in his unlawful conflict with Ukraine. Shoigu's ministry had originally stated preparations for him to leave on Thursday, but he stayed in North Korea longer than anticipated. Despite the demands of the conflict in Ukraine, where he is experiencing serious reverses in Kyiv's counter-offensive, he was eventually seen departing early on Friday after spending his fourth day in the oppressive regime. He received criticism from pro-war blogs in Russia for losing focus as Ukraine ramps up its military retaliation. However, there is concern that a covert agreement may see the delivery of weapons and drones to Russia for use in more atrocities in Ukraine. The 39-year-old despot has received unparalleled Russian kowtowing during Shoigu's visit. General Kang Sun Nam, the defense minister, charged that the United States and its allies were raising tensions in the area during his statement at the parade. Since 2006, North Korea has been subject to UN sanctions because of its missile and nuclear programs. It also prohibits the creation of ballistic missiles. Russia and China have recently rejected you. S. A led efforts to put further sanctions on North Korea over its persistent development of ballistic missiles, claiming that current restrictions should be relaxed for humanitarian reasons and to encourage Pyongyang to engage in negotiations. In February 2018, North Korea had a low-key ceremony without Kim's ICBMs, which was the last time it welcomed representatives from other governments for a military display. At the time, North Korea was starting diplomatic relations with Seoul and Washington as Kim sought to use his nuclear weapons to gain much-needed economic advantages. These efforts resulted in a summit between Kim and Donald Trump, who was the President of the United States at the time, in June of that year. However, the diplomacy broke down after their second meeting in February of 2019, because the Americans turned down North Korea's demands for significant sanctions relief in exchange for a partial surrender of their nuclear arsenal. Since then, Kim has intensified the development of the nuclear weapons he views as the best defense against gangster-like U.S. pressure and sanctions. According to Lee Farik Easley, Professor of International Studies at EWHA Women's University in Seoul, the Chinese and Russian participation in events using prohibited ballistic missiles raises questions about those nations' commitment to enact penalties. When two permanent UN Security Council members publicly backed a North Korean state that violates human rights and disobeys resolutions prohibiting its nuclear and missile development, easily said, it doesn't help. All members of the Security Council and, frankly, all member states of the UN share the same responsibility to uphold Security Council resolutions, UN. Spokesman Stefan Dujeric said.